Hi, Dr. Windish from Sparks Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine again. Welcome to our video series for parents. Please remember that these videos are not intended to replace visits to your regular physician. If you have questions, we're more than happy to see you here in our office on a same-day basis if need be. You can call us at area code 775-359-7111. Because of ethical considerations, we really can't help you over the telephone or the internet uh, because that's just terrible medical care and, and really not something that's safe or appropriate to be giving. Uh, but if we can help you, we'd be more than happy to see you here in our office. Today what we want to talk about are lymph nodes. What are they, what do they do, and what kinds of things make them, make them go bad. This is a common source of a lot of concern for parents, but for kids anyway, most of the time it really is nothing to worry about. So what are they? Lymph nodes are immune tissue that is scattered throughout the body, and there are hundreds of them throughout the body. Kind of think of them as the army bases where the army men live, ready to go out and fight a war. And just like the army, before a war, they swell up full of new recruits, and then they send the recruits off to go fight a war. At the end of the war, the recruits come back to their local army bases, where they're then discharged from the army. And during peacetime, those army bases shrink back down. These lymphoidal tissues are scattered throughout the body, some of which you can see and feel. Some are very deep in the body and you can't feel. Um... Oftentimes people refer to them as glands. I put that in quotes because they're not true glandular tissue. They don't secrete anything. So from a medical standpoint, that's not accurate. But the common descriptor of these is, is as a gland, and so people will refer to them as glands. Because glands are swollen is a, a common chief complaint. Where are they found commonly? Well, they're commonly found in the head and neck. And they're on either side of the strap, big strap muscle of the neck. So in front is known as the anterior cervical chain. In the back is the posterior cervical chain. There are some in the way back of the head called the occipital chain. Some behind the ears called the posterior auricular chain. And a few in the front known as the preauricular chain. There are also some above the collarbone known as the supraclavicular chain. Those lymph nodes, if swollen up, always have the potential to represent something bad and need to be evaluated immediately. There are lymph nodes that are found under the arm, known as the axillary chain, and they are found up against the chest wall, not up against the arm here, but rather here, up against the chest wall. There are some in the groin, up against the pelvis, known as the inguinal chain. Those are the common ones. There are other ones in the elbow known as the epitrochlear chain and the trochlear chain. Those, if, are if they're swollen, also represent significant pathology and need to be seen right away. There are many scattered along the spinal column. Those are too deep to feel. There are some deep in the chest, kind of right around the area of the heart. Uh, those are too deep to feel as well, but can be seen on chest x-ray. Um, so why do these things swell up? Well, because the army base lives there, they can swell up most commonly from infection. And most of these infections are benign. So they'll swell up because, especially the ones in the neck, they'll swell up because uh, you have a cold. They'll swell up from allergies. They'll swell up from strep throat. Tonsils are a type of lymph node. And so your tonsils swell up from strep throat. They will swell up from mononucleosis or mono or Epstein-Barr virus infection. And they get huge from mono and they're tender and, and sore. Um, they'll swell up from a scratch on the head or curling iron burns make them swell up in the area that they, they typically drain. Um, a splinter in the foot will make them swell up in the groin, or a stubbed toe, or an ingrown toenail will all make them swell up. Viral infections will make them swell up. Like any army base, once in a while, a spy can get in there and set up an Al-Qaeda cell. Okay? Infection can invade 
the lymph node itself, that's known as lymphadenitis. When that happens, the lymph node is usually hot to the touch, it's bright red, often feels boggy because there's fluid or pus in it. What kinds of things can do that? Well, very common infections, staph and strep can do it, um, most commonly. Tuberculosis can also do it. So when, when we see something like that, we do have to test for TB and oftentimes have to excise the node to get the infection out so that antibiotics can work. Just like when an army base has an Al-Qaeda cell caught up in it, we have to remove the good guys and bomb the base. In children, it is very rare, but in adults not so rare, that cancer can also make the nodes swell up. These lymph nodes, when they swell up from cancer, are usually greater than an inch in diameter. So if they're smaller than a quarter, you're probably okay. Uh, but if they're greater than an inch or they're rock hard, then we get a little bit worried. Again, tuberculosis can do this. Fortunately, TB is treatable under most circumstances. In adults, tumors are more likely to do this because tumors will met uh, cancers will metastasize. They'll spread to the regional lymph nodes. So um, a skin cancer on the scalp will spread to the node here or to the node here, whereas children don't typically have these kinds of cancers that metastasize. Uh, rarely, rarely, rarely a lymph node can get large from a primary tumor where the node itself is cancerous. Something like lymphoma or Hodgkin's lymphoma can do that, but that's fortunately rather uncommon in children. We do need to consider it, but again, those lymph nodes are usually bigger than a centimeter. I'm sorry, bigger than two centimeters or an inch. Um, infection is much more common. So when to worry? Well, when to worry is if they're bigger than an inch, if they're hot to the touch, or if they're extremely tender. Extremely tender nodes usually are from viral infection, but the tenderness is treatable. Why stay home and suffer? If you're not sure, see your physician. Nodes from viral infections in particular can take a long time to go down, and if they're the size of a pea under the skin, or a BB under the skin, and that's actually a normal lymph node size. And in really skinny children, those nodes can be palpable for months, if not years. So if what you're feeling are little BB-like lumps in your child's neck or behind your child's ear, that's definitely nothing to worry about. That will persist until your child becomes an adult where the tissue is now big enough and there's enough muscle tissue and enough fat that the nodes are just hidden in the fat and you can't feel them anymore. We would still see them on MRI. They're still there. They belong there. Uh, but you can't feel them anymore. But in skinny four or five year olds, you can often feel them and they'll last for months on end. And that's just because because the kids are skinny and the node is just right up against the bone and you can feel it. But those are usually little BB or pea sized lumps under the skin. Anything bigger than a quarter, we do want to see you for. Once we've determined that it's nothing to worry about, we can safely watch these for several months while we're waiting to see what happens. I hope this has helped to demystify this for you. If you have any concerns or questions, though, because of the remote risk of cancer in a child, it is worth seeing your physician. This is not something you want to diagnose at home. Definitely not something that can or should be attempted to be diagnosed over the Internet. So if you're not sure what's going on, give us a call. We'll be happy to see you here at our office at area code 359-7111. We'll see you next time.